When someone asks a car aficionado to talk about the largest engines produced by the domestic auto companies and placed in vehicles, there's a couple that come to mind. First is the Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 that was produced from 1970 to 1976. As you see here, this is a 1976 model with the optional fuel injection. The 500 was a super smooth V8 that, as I mentioned, was introduced in 1970 after this particular configuration of engine had been introduced in 1968 in 472 cubic inch form. In 1970, Cadillac decided to give the Eldorado a bit more differentiation from the rest of its lineup and provide it with a 500 cubic inch V8 while the rest of the lineup stuck with the 472 cubic inch V8. Of course, there were other large engines that were produced by the Blue Oval as well as Mopar. Over at Ford, the largest gas engine that they produced during this time period was a 460 cubic inch V8, certainly no slouch, and Mopar had to make do with a 440 cubic inch V8, and poor old AMC just had the 401, which actually is one of my favorite engines of all time. The AMC 401 is just a wonderful engine, extremely powerful, especially given its size. But I digress. In any case, what was the largest V8 that was ever produced in a vehicle? And I'm being a bit vague here and not saying passenger cars because this certainly wouldn't apply to passenger cars. The answer is not the Dodge Viper V10, which in 2003 would surpass the Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 and become a 506 cubic inch V10. No, it's not that. It's actually GMC's 637 cubic inch V8 engine. Yes, indeed, I said that correctly. This engine displays 637 cubic inches and was produced just for a few model years from 1967 through 1972. Now, before we get started, let me just call out something here. And while today GMCs are basically kind of tarted up Chevrolets and have a lot of the same componentry, including engines under hood. Back during this time period in the mid to late 1960s and even before, GMC offered a number of engines that really were only offered in GMCs. Back in the 50s, GMC did borrow some other GM division V8s and put them under hood like Pontiacs and Oldsmobile V8s. But by this point, GMC was equipping their vehicles, including in some cases the light duty pickups that came equipped with the GMC specific V6 that had many different versions of displacement 305, 351, 379, 401, 423, and 478 cubic inches. Again, those were all six cylinders that GMC offered around this time period. In fact, GMC actually coupled two V6 engines together to make a V12 twin six engine. And this V12 twin six engine would power a number of heavy duty trucks. It displaced 702 cubic inches and it was offered from 1960 to 1966. And as you can see in the picture here, it literally looks like two six cylinder engines that are coupled together. We'll discuss that twin six in another video. We're going to talk, as I said in this one, about the 637 cubic inch V8 engine. Let's start with some of the interesting features of it. First of all, this 637 cubic inch V8 was really based off of the 478 cubic inch V6, the largest V6 that GMC had made during the time. It had a 5.125 inch bore and a 3.86 inch stroke. Talk about an over square design a pour over five inches and a stroke under four inches. And the thought there was that a shorter stroke would allow this engine to last longer because the piston wasn't moving up and down in its bore nearly as much as if this engine had a longer stroke. The other interesting thing about this 637 cubic inch V8 is that it was based on a V6, as I mentioned, and as a consequence, it had a 60 degree V angle as opposed to the typical 90 degree V angle that was often employed on V8 configurations. And this was because, as I mentioned, it was just simply a 478 cubic inch six cylinder with a couple extra cylinders added to it. Now, when you do something like that, it's almost like the Buick 3.8 liter or 3800 V6 that was based on the 
215 cubic inch aluminum V8 that was introduced in 1961. That Buick 3.8 liter V6 has a 90 degree bank angle because it's based on a V8. This V8 has a 60 degree bank angle because it's based on a V6, so it's just the inverse. As a consequence, the engines have some natural imbalances associated with them. So the really cool thing about this 637 cubic inch V8 is that it actually has a balance shaft in it to smooth out those secondary vibrations and make it perfectly acceptable and even smooth in heavy-duty truck use. You would think that GMC wouldn't be overly concerned with smoothness in its heavy-duty trucks, but I guess during this time period, they thought that they needed that level of refinement. Another interesting feature of this V8 was that as you notice here, do you see any spark plugs on this V8 engine? You certainly see some spark plug wires, but where are the spark plugs? Well, you'll notice that they're not in the typical location in between the exhaust manifold ports. They're actually sitting kind of in the V of the engine up top. And the reason for that was GMC thought that the spark plug wires would get pretty crispy in these heavy-duty trucks because they were running at relatively full throttle a good fraction of the time. The exhaust manifolds were getting extra hot. And as a consequence, they thought it was just a better design to move the spark plugs to the interior of the V and the wires as well so they didn't risk getting overheated by those exhaust manifolds on the outside of the engine. This, by the way, was also a feature of the GMC V6 engines that I just mentioned. They also had their spark plugs in the interior of the Vs. Despite its huge size, the engine wasn't all that powerful when it came to horsepower. It only made about 275 horsepower at 2,800 RPM, but it did produce 600 pound-feet of torque at just 1,600 RPM, and that was really the benefit of this engine. Another benefit is, as I mentioned, it replaced the 702 cubic inch twin six, and the engine was considerably more compact, if you can call a 637 cubic inch big block V8 compact. But in this case, it really was. It was almost a foot shorter than that V12 engine, and it was also a couple hundred pounds lighter. So it overall was a great engine from the perspective of being a better packaged engine, and it had actually identical horsepower to the 702 cubic inch twin six that it replaced. It was indeed slightly down on torque as that twin six made 630 pound feet, but eh, really didn't make that much of a difference, particularly given how much lighter the 637 cubic inch V8 was. There's also another cool little factoid about these engines, both the V6s as well as the V8s, and that is the GMC actually created diesel versions of these engines called the Toro Flow Diesel. So there was a dieselized version of the 637 cubic inch V8. It was rated at 195 horsepower, so considerably less than the gas engines, 275. But there was a twin turbocharged version that was available, and that made 220 horsepower, as well as about 460 pound-feet of torque. Now, perhaps this is where Oldsmobile division later on would get the idea that it could dieselize its gasoline engines and come up with the Olds 350 cubic inch diesel. But in that case, dieselizing, obviously, the gas engines didn't work out so well. Here, the Toro Flow diesels weren't so bad. I wouldn't say they were great, but they really weren't bad overall, especially when you compare them to some of the other diesels of the time. But in general, diesel power hadn't yet taken over in a lot of the heavy-duty trucks although it was certainly up and coming. And the 637 cubic inch V8 really served a number of customers quite well, aside from the fact that it certainly slurped the gas. We'll now close out this video with some sounds of one of these 637 cubic inch V8s running so you can get a sense of just how cool they sound. I wish there were more of these around. It'd be great to dump in some particular vehicle or hot rod I just think it would be great to see, but oh well, there really aren't many left, but the ones that are left are certainly cool, and they are one big monster. Thanks again for watching. Let's listen to the sounds of a 637 cubic inch GMC V8 engine.
Obviously a slight exhaust leak on that 637 V8, but still you can hear how whisper quiet it is and you can see how smooth it is. What cracks me up is the especially small two-barrel carburetor on these. That's right, a two-barrel carburetor. So for those of you who comment that, as an example, my 71 Mercury with a 429 two-barrel, or GM did put two-barrel carburetors in 455 cubic inch V8s, look at what you have here, a 637 cubic inch V8 with a two-barrel carburetor. Pretty sweet. Thanks again for watching.